Hey, um, I think um, that's the first format I try where I actually stand in front of the camera or sit in front of the camera and try to talk about some stuff. And you guys have to tell me if that's content you are interested in or if you say, probably just shut up and uh, do some instruments and tutorials, right? So um, that's basically a test if anyone is interested in in stuff like this. So, and I want to talk about Bitwig and the history why I came to Bitwig and um, how I use it and how I see it and how maybe um, Bitwig is developing into the future. So, um, I came to Bitwig in 2013 or 14 uh, from Cubase and I was doing in Cubase everything on the audio tracks. I had my like for instance drums, I had kick drums, snare drums, samples on the audio tracks, arranging stuff on the audio tracks, stretching, pitching and all that kinds of stuff. And I was looking for, um, I was seeing Bitwig on the net and I was trying uh, the release, the 1.0 release, uh, I was trying the demo version and I was kind of hooked. It looked like a toy, but not in a bad way. It's more like that it encourages you to play with the music. And Cubase is more like, you know, conservative way of, of mixing stuff. It's the priority is more of mixing tracks, mixing audio. And the priority of Bitwig is more like creating stuff, music and so on. So, And if you look at the um, the Bitwig homepage, it actually says modern music production and performance for Windows. And um, it, it never says it's a DAW or DAW. It's actually like an instrument, right? Where you can perform your music or create your music inside uh, an application. And um, it, it, it's, it takes some time for me to get that and I was trying to treat um, Bitwig like uh, I had treated uh, Cubase. I was trying to input my samples on the audio tracks and was trying to uh, create everything as audio, right? But uh, in the first version or first iteration of Bitwig Studio, there was uh, some features missing like stretching and there was no grouping and um, a lot of stuff was missing and you can do that in Bitwig at this time uh, what I was what I've done in, in uh, Cubase so um, I try to come around those problems and find solutions because it's what I always do right if, if you're stuck in one way you try another way and uh, lead a path into uh, solutions, right? So I was trying to um, using more the sampler and the chain and I saw that you can do a lot more with, with those things because the chain was so um, built to have modular uh, modular tools inside. You can, you can uh, use an LFO, you can use random modulators and um, put things into uh, each other, um, change stuff. Um, um, and there was, was a lot of uh, new ground I have to, um, to find and to uh, explore, right? And I was using Bitwig more and more and more and uh, I was using Cubase less and less because it was not so playful, right? And that's, that was basically the history why I'm came to Bitwig. I was trying the demo, was hooked, and then I saw the possibilities and the workflow was great. And yeah, that's that's it basically. So I'm using Bitwig in my my daily life now, in my daily um, work life or yeah, music life. And um, yeah, it's a pretty uh, fun environment to create stuff and uh, it makes you um, pretty creative uh, in terms of yeah ideas so because you have a lot of stuff to explore right um, and I see a lot of videos and comments and forum posts on the internet where a lot of people compare different workstations um, so Ableton Live and Logic and Cubase with Bitwig and so on and um, it's hard to compare these uh, applications because they have all different um, 
target audiences and different uh, focus and different uh, priorities in terms of what they want to achieve. They look uh, maybe the same and do similar stuff, but the focus is very, very different. And um, that's not uh, easy to uh, compare in a, in, a, in a table kind of way where you have listed all features and then you compare the features and then you say, oh, well, this application has uh, two features more than I choose this one um, that, because it's a better um, um, decision for your money, right? That's n it's not working that way. Um, Bitwig has a lot of hidden features maybe like the, the workflow, because um, it's, it's built from a musical standpoint, I think. It, a lot of stuff you do in Bitwig is not coming not from a technical background. It's abstract everything technical away and comes more from, when you tr from a musical um, standpoint, when you will. So um, if you, you have an idea and you try to create that idea or make that idea a reality, so you don't want to hassle with a uh, resolution or um, I don't know timings or uh, stuff like that. You want to um, create stuff that you have in your mind playfully. So and that that's the main feature of Bitwig for me, because you can do that in that application. And um, when you have, for instance, Ableton Live, I think Ableton Live is in the terms of what, what the uh, interface looks similar, but it does different stuff and it has, it has different priorities. So the name is live. So they made it that you have in the first iteration of Ableton Live that you have basically loops. You can arrange loops live. And now they do stuff with the controller. We have a controller and you can do uh, instruments, play instruments inside Ableton Live with the controllers so where everything is focused on that live aspect. Okay, so I think that's the main uh, focus or audience of live is basically performance and doing stuff on the fly. And Bitwig is more like creating stuff, um, maybe also live, but not so much, but more like um, in an offline kind of way, so in your bedroom for instance. Um, and the, the mind focus of uh, Cubase is, as you will, more like mixing stuff. When you have a studio and you have a band that you want to record, and then you have a lot of tracks and you try to mix stuff, then you choose maybe more like stuff like Cubase or Pro Tools. So it's more the audience for that is mastering and mixing engineers and um, they overlap in certain areas that's for sure but you can see where um, the main focus is tend to shift on each of that product so that's more like a fair comparison i think when you try to understand what the application wants to achieve and where it comes from and what the main audience is of that application so um, I see basically Bitwig as a middle ground between Cubase and Live. And there's also a point of um, shifting the focus. So if you see Ableton Live started with only loops and wave loops, you had all your, um, you can track in your drum loop and then you can stretch it or warp it. And then that's what that's that's it basically you have a, like, a session view where you can trigger your loops and then you can play it live and that's that was the first iteration of live and in bitwig you always had the idea from the first version on that you have a kind of modular approach to everything so you can exchange things you can build modular um, stuff or combine modular small modules devices as they called and um, create uh, at this create a way f from my idea to realization and um, so the main focus is basically creation and um, if you see uh, Cubase, Cubase comes from a straight MIDI sequencing background and then it 
became more like an, a VST host and then or a recording, a recording uh, workstation and now it tries to um, keep track of the development in other uh, areas or DOS and they all, all the uh, applications try to take on features on, the, on their um, main product. So, um, but Bitwig is pretty new on the market and its main focus was always modularity and um, yeah, be more like an instrument. And all that stuff that's in Bitwig right now, it feels like it was planned from the first, from the first uh, base uh, or from the first iteration of the application on. And in the other applications like Live, where you have Max for Live, it feels like kind of tacked on. You know, it's like at some point they maybe saw that other applications like BigWit came up with this modular approach and they tried to take on stuff they bought, bought on the market. And um, yeah, it's okay, maybe. But I think if you uh, create something in Bitwig and give some, someone else um, a preset file, for instance, for the, for the grid or so, then he can use it. But in Ableton Live, you don't know. Is your friend using Max for Life? Did, did he need to buy it? Um, and so on. If you use Reactor uh, inside Bitwig, you don't know if your friend using Reactor, he has to use Bitwig and Reactor. So um, Bitwig is more like then uh, where you have everything together. And there's also another point, and that's the cross-platform cross uh, availability. So Bitwig is running on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And I think that's a big deal. Also, uh, in combination with the grid, because you can now build instruments, very advanced instruments with the grid, and can serve it or can use it on Linux, Mac, and Windows at the same time. Ableton Live doesn't run on uh, Linux. It's, it only runs on Windows and um, uh, Mac, also Cubase. In Cubase, you also need the dongle to actually use it for, for the license model, which is pretty annoying. And um, so there's a lot of uh, small features and the combination of everything and the f how you, how they have workflows inside Bitwig that's, that coming from a musical background. It creates a pretty interesting, special uh, positioned product, I think. So. Um, that's how I view it, at least with Bitwig. So I really like Bitwig. I think it's had, it's has, it has a special position on the market right now, and the future looks very bright for Bitwig. I think, even that it has no not the mainstream uh, attention at the moment, but I think that's actually a great thing because of the users. And that's my last point for this video. Um, we have at the moment. As with every application, you have a lot of different positioned users that try to create different stuff with Bitwig and came or come from a different um, background. Like for me, I'm coming from an um, electronic producer music background from Cubase. And there are other um, people that come to Bitwig because of the modular environment, because they want to build instruments and nothing else. It, don't want to make music, for instance. Or there are other users that come from a scoring background, they want to um, write down notations, so they want notation features. And there are other users that want to record stuff, and I think, oh, well, the, oh, the faders are too short for me. Um, I need bigger faders because I want to mix stuff. And sometimes you have to say, well, you can't please everyone. Um, there are a lot of features inside the product that you can't do well for everyone. So you have to make decisions, right? Uh, to leave something out uh, or put something in. And sometimes you have to say, maybe you're not r using the right product, right? If you're uh, using a studio and want just to record bands uh, in a recording studio, maybe use Pro Tools or Cubase and Bitwig is not the right tool for your um, task, right? Um, it sounds a bit harsh, but it's 
it's like that. I, I mean, you have to use the right tools for the right task. That's, that's, I mean, and you can use both. I mean, if you want to create music, then you can use Bitwig. If you want to record bands, then you have to use Cubase or Reaper or uh, Logic. Or I don't know, something like that. That's more su suited for uh, su suited for the, that way for that workflow. And um, yeah, I have to find find that out uh, for myself that we have a lot of different users and use cases at the moment in the uh, in the community uh, because there were were sometimes a lot of uh, questions about stuff where I'm thinking, well. It's not so important. Why do you have a problem like that? I mean, for instance, uh, sign, uh, sign waves. Someone came up in the chat with um, serum. The VST serum makes better or cleaner sign waves in terms of resolution or form. I don't know what it exactly was. It's just an example. And it's not a bad question or a bad a problem you have, but it shows that a lot of users have different focus or uh, different priorities um, what, uh, what the application or what the workstation um, should do or should can do, right? And um, it's sometimes a bit hard for me because I'm coming from a music background. All I want to do is create music. I don't care if a sine wave is not really clean. I don't care about resolutions. If it sounds right to my ears, I like it. And it's all I want to, uh, my focus, my main focus is basically the result and not so much the features of something or uh, technical details of something. I can dive into that, but I don't want to dive into that too deep because I want to make music, right? You can get lost in something like this that's basically a never-ending hole to oh well th this is this is enabled better and you can don't select multiple things here and you can do that in Ableton and Bitwig can do that and therefore I don't use Bitwig and that's not my kind of thinking if I have a problem inside Bitwig I try to find another solution or make something different or just write the devs an email and I say hey I want to do this and that maybe think about implementing that in the future and, um, and if they don't it's not I'm not mad about it I mean it's it's their way of thinking and their vision and I like it so far so um, yeah that's basically everything I wanted to talk about I think it's pretty long at the moment 80 minutes I think I cut out some things that I <laughs> that I have spoken not so, not so well. All I want to know from you guys is uh, what you think about this um, video content. If I should do that again, is it too boring? Is my English too bad? And um, yeah, leave a like or comment, ask questions. And um, that is, that's it for now. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.